Look, I've made absolutely no bones about the fact that I have very little football experience, that I've only been playing football manager since the summer of 2023, and that the history of the game is just something that I'm not generally familiar with. So last year, when we went into the semifinals of the FA Cup, I thought we had a monster chance as we were taking on Arsenal at Wembley Stadium. Little did I know that we've never beaten Arsenal. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 67 of Bottoms of the Top. How you doing? I'm Mr. Cellophane, and yeah, it's right there. 13 times Arsenal and Fulham have played each other, both in real life and in football manager. Fulham is 0, 1, and 12. Hopefully we can turn history on its ear because Arsenal is coming to Craven Cottage. It's the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. 14th time's a charm, ain't it? And since our last episode, we have settled down to earth just a little bit. Uh, apparently, while we are ready for the Premier League, it's still those top-tier teams that we're going to be struggling against a little bit. After the 1-1 draw against Manchester United, we took on Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Couldn't get anything done offensively. 1-0 ended up being the score. I was getting a little worried about the tactic then because, you know, we didn't generate anything against Chelsea. Then we played a couple of friendlies because we had like four weeks off and we dominated lesser competition before returning to the Premier League action against Manchester City, who had just taken over the top spot on the table. They went ahead 2-0 before Andre Lucas Goodjanson came in off of the bench to score one for us. And because we had scored all those goals in the friendlies, I was fairly confident that our 4-2-3-1 was going to be pretty effective. I mean, again, City, a top-tier team. They have not really fallen off, even though we are in October of 2030. From where they are now, first goal was scored by some guy who looks like Thor. I can't remember what his name is. Thought he was offside, but apparently wasn't. Uh, and then we then bounced back. We took on West Ham at home. 4-2 is your score. Toshimitsu Endo picked up a pair of goals. And we got tallies from Federico Guerrero. He leads the team now with six, or I think he's tied with six for the team lead. And Marco Morales scored his first goal of the year. So we find ourselves in ninth place, sitting on 14 points after nine matches. We are eight points off of the top. That's where Manchester City sits. However, only three points separate us from third place Wolves. They're still really tight in the top half of the Premier League table. And we are right now nine points clear of the relegation zone with a whole bunch of teams in between us. So things are looking pretty good there. We've got Arsenal in the Carabao Cup. Then we're taking on Wolves, the team currently sitting in third place. Another match at home so hopefully we can use that home cooking advantage to our advantage i really didn't think that sentence through before i completed it in today's episode of course with all that said that we've got a ton of matches at this point in the year yeah we had that whole month off and then it's like boom 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 we are making some changes to the lineup against arsenal which could potentially be weakening our team but honestly the board doesn't really care about the Carabao Cup. I'd much rather win the FA Cup if given the opportunity, although a victory here does get us into the quarterfinals, the final eight. So mm, six of one, half dozen of another. We've got uh, Shavlina in goal with a back four of Allen, Akahoman, Williams, and Guest. We failed at our promise of giving Reese Williams more playing time because we kind of, sort of had... Pollock in there for the last couple of matches and then we were off for a month so we ran out of time to fulfill that promise so the team came to us and we had to promise them some more time again Renoki is going to be getting the start alongside Craig Ross in the defensive midfield it's going to be Endo on the left wing Zidkika Chandler on the right hand side as Melvin Costa is going to be taking a break for this one we're going to bring him back for the next league match against Wolves Tom Burford in the attacking midfield and Gabriel Amaya is going to be leading the line as our striker. Regardless of the result, our return to the Premier League 
has been successful so far. Sitting mid-table after nine matches. That's what? Just about a quarter of the season gone by already. And we are hoping that we can advance further in the cup. But Arsenal is uh, going to have something to say about that. Free kick, Martinelli. Uh, that's going to go off of the post, I guess. It looked like it was saved by Shevlina. Uh, but it was a goal kick. But a final third throw in. Martinelli in the box. Moving it to the right. Bakayo Saka is going to deliver with his left foot his fifth goal of the season to put Arsenal up 1-0. to nil. And we find ourselves in a very similar situation to where we were in the FA Cup last year. And that is down relatively early in this match with Arsenal striking first. To be fair, though, we've uh, we've gone down early in quite a number of matches so far this season. It's only come to bite us the three times that we've lost. We've come back in every single one of them. Ugh, every other one of them. Ugh, what in-depth analysis are we talking about here? We won every game we did not lose uh, is basically what I'm trying to say. Uger Oshtekin up the left wing. Guest is going to take his man out out but no penalty called Mikaeus with the shot from just inside the box and that's going to go over everything and lead to a Fulham goal kick no harm no foul but a couple of minutes later looking to come up and oh no well, this is looking familiar to the end of uh, our season a couple of years ago where we've got a team that's incredibly frustrated because Tom Burford is now out of the match Thanks to a very, very, very poorly taken red card. So we are going to uh, be down to 10 men for the final 75 minutes of this match. And the resulting play is a free kick to Arsenal. CK on a yellow card. He's going to drop it back for Saliba, who will try to move forward. We've got a bit of a high line going on here. Hopefully it doesn't come to bite us in the butt. Gabriel Martinelli. Back for Uger, up for uh, Tim, Tim, I almost said Tim Rice, Declan Rice. That red card has just completely thrown me off. Rafael Luis will play it once again to Saliba. I feel like they're going to turn it over here. Like, they, we keep getting them to move back. There we go. Reese Williams picking it off. Shavlina looking to send it forward, get things restarted. Hoofing it long. Zidkika Chandler, he's got it, gets past his man. He's in the box. He shoots. And a brilliant move, but a save made. So a corner kick coming up for Fulham. 10-man Fulham. Can we score and equalize on the set piece? Renokia looking to deliver near post. Williams can't quite get to it. Reyes will clear. Ross is going to chase that down. Craig Ross, the 22-year-old that we got from Everton after a loan spell that was pretty successful last year. Free kick can't pick out Declan Rice. The clearance, though, taken by Martinelli. Rice knocked away, and Renokia is going to get called for a penalty. That was a clean tackle. VAR, please back me up. I know you're not going to. It's Arsenal. It's one of your big boys. Penalty's been awarded. Let's see if uh, Shevlina can be the hero here. Bakayo Saka looking for two. Yeah. He's just too good. Bakayo Saka, his sixth goal of the year, delivering on the penalty. How quickly can I skip the replay? Come on, where are you? There we go. Don't need to see that again. Shevlina went one way, Saka went the other. And here comes Arsenal again. Rafael Luis, 25th minute. Out wide for Saka. Allen's going to sweep it away, but Bakayo Saka gets it again. Rafael Luis, Siske over to Rice. Virts, Martinelli, beautiful one-touch passing. Mikeas uh, throws it wide. Rikeas, you, you've now ruined every attack that you have been a part of. So please, son, keep that up. Corner kick, Saka. It's low. Chandler will clear it. Reyes is there, though. Back for Saka. I think he was offside. Save made. Akamea can't clear. Allen can. Mikaeus, though, tracking it down. They are just all over us. His pass is an errant one, though. And Chandler coming away with it. Looking to start up on the counterattack. Amaya will just drop it off as... Uh, Things end there just to give Arsenal another highlight. Micaeus Martinelli back for Micaeus. Looking for Reyes. Finds Reese Williams instead who clears it right at Saliba. So Siske will push it up to Saka again. Endo trying to knock it clear but Bakayo Saka sticking with it. Siske in the middle. Declan Rice for Saliba at the midfield stripe. Ugor up for Micaeus. 
Trying to go up the left wing. Finds Martinelli in the box. Guest will sweep that away from him. Can we have a successful counterattack, please? Nope. Well, maybe. Reese Williams gets it back to uh, Shavlina, who will just hoof it down looking for Endo. Endo's not going to win an aerial battle, but Allen picks up the loose ball. Allen carrying it up that far sideline. Endo moving it to the interior. He's good with the ball. Endo stays with it. And Toshimitsu Endo with his fourth goal of the season. Doing it all himself. Well, I mean, Glenn Allen along the sideline played his part. But once Endo got the ball, he used his speed and his dribbling wizardry and a little bit of his left foot at the end to pass Hine. And bring Fulham back within one. It's now two to one. But Arsenal with the ball again in the 34th minute. Yeah, we haven't even played a full half of football yet. And this is going to be probably one of my longest live commentary videos that I have put out since the series began. It's worth Verts. Saka, Reyes chips the goalkeeper, hits the crossbar, but Reyes was offside. So it wouldn't have counted anyway. 2-1 is your score. We only have two shots on goal to their seven. This first half has essentially been all Arsenal. The free kick, I can't find anybody except for Shavlina, who will just dive on top of it before sending it wide. Again, you can't expect a five foot three Endo to go up and win the ball against Siske, and Arsenal will once again control. Amaya trying to knock his man off the ball, can't. Right wing feed for Bakayo Saka, Rafael Luis. Moving it to his left, toward the box, shooting, and that's tipped wide by Shevlina. Another corner kick coming up for Arsenal. This time Martinelli is going to take it, looking to deliver the in-swinger. He's going to go low and wide to Reyes, thrown on, but it's going to be a goal kick as it is deflected off of the head of an Arsenal player. Out into touch. Can we get to halftime without any further Arsenal highlights, please? Three minutes added on, and they will go bye-bye. The first 48 minutes are in the books. Arsenal with 11 shots to our two. They lead this one 2-1. to one. I mean, honestly, if it weren't for the corrupt Premier League officials, uh, this would be an even match. That penalty. Still disagree with it. Arsenal with the ball once again. They are up a man. Declan Rice for Uger Oshtakin. Into the middle. Krupe Jr. And... <laughs> Our buddy, Mikaeus, thank you very much for once again completely failing to come anywhere close to the target. We did make one change. Aureli Amenda is in in place of Reese Williams, who wasn't having the greatest game, was on a yellow card. Figured it best to get him off since we are already down a man and the officials hate us. Reyes, nice turn. Oh, that's going to take a minor deflection in front. Martin Odegaard with the feed. It's 3-1 Arsenal and... You really just knew it was going to be a matter of time. First off, the dreaded final third throw-in. Rafael, uh, Luis, Odegaard, Reyes turned, hit. Oh, that was Amanda, wasn't it? No, it was Aka Homan. I mean, there's not much you can do about that. I'm surprised it wasn't an own goal because I'm pretty sure that was off target. And they usually give him an own goal if the shot is going to be off target. Another corner, Amanda can't quite clear it far enough. Mikaeus. Again, missing the target completely. Mikias just just keep shooting it. We will take these goal kicks all day long. Nice save made by Shavlina. Krupe Jr., Mikias nodding it down. Ross is going to clear it. Guindo up ahead to Declan Rice. And Arsenal going to attack one more time. Let's... Uh, Let's bring some fresh legs on to the pitch, shall we? Uh, Good Janssen will come in for Amaya. Endo is a little frustrated. So you know what we are going to do? We are going to cancel this. We're going to pull, we're, we're going to we're going to change our shape. We are going to go to our normal. Well, it used to be a four, two, one or four, three, two, one. Obviously, we don't have the man in the middle because we are missing. Our good buddy, Tom Burford. Thank you very much. So, Andre Lucas Goodjanson is going to come in as our striker. Marco Morales, uh, probably not in the greatest of moods, but he is going to move into that position and replace Toshimitsu Endo, who was the hero of the last match. He made the team of the week, scored in this one as well, but can't really fault him on what's been going on. Uh, Zikika Chandler 
Also not having a great game. Renokia will make way for the youngster, Josh King, as uh, that is four changes in all being made. Game pretty much is a goner. It was pretty much gone once. Uh, I mean, Sacco scoring in the ninth minute was, was pretty bad. But Tom Burford getting sent off about eight, nine minutes later, that was just the absolute worst thing that could have possibly happened to us. Giving away a stupid penalty obviously did not help either. We did manage to claw one back before Arsenal just being up for so long against 10 men is just you're never gonna win and and if you do you are incredibly lucky we were never going to win not not once we went down to 10 men we have been resilient like that before but against the team that is superior not just on paper but on the pitch in arsenal i think Kruby jr was offside the flag is up and confirmed it so no sir you did not just get a goal in a carabao cup match VAR will confirm this. The goal has been disallowed. We don't need to see that again. I think we all get the idea. Can we at least get some positive highlights? We have not had a single shot in this second half. And now Glenn Allen is going to go off injured. And um, yeah, we have no more changes that we can make. Well, that stinks. Um, yeah, it's not going to let me make any additional substitutes. So... See if we can get Amenda in the middle here. We'll move guest, then we'll just, I don't know. Something like that. Let's do something like that. Please, dear sweet Lord, let us survive the last couple of minutes without anything bad happening. Of course, we've got a highlight. It's in our end. Sent forward. Morales will just head it deep. Saliba coming up. In the final 20 seconds of regulation, Krupe Jr. is in. He's going to beat the goalkeeper. I think he may have been offside again. Krupe Jr. still celebrating what he believes is, I think, his first goal. But I'm pretty sure if it said first goal. Oh, no, he scored. You guys proved your dominance. Not a single shot in the second half. I was so excited about coming back for this match. I thought we were finally going to do it. And we lost even worse than we did last year at Wembley. Really hope this isn't a portent of things to come. Glenn Allen, the injury in that match is going to keep him out for the next three to four weeks. We're going to send him to the specialist. It is uh, fractured ribs. Also, Tom Burford is banned for one match, so we're going to fine him half week's wages, which is what we typically do when somebody gets a red card in a match. Uh, Zidkika Chandler has leaked how we slammed the team in the locker room. And, oh, yeah, Graham Potter was hanging out at Craven Cottage Taking a look at Alex Guest, Tom Burford, Aaron Ram Oh, Graham Potter's the England coach. Don't feel so bad about this one. Well, I hope this doesn't hit us too hard. Uh, the board wanted us to have the best youth setup in the world, and we don't even have the best youth setup in England. We fell into third place. I believe we were in second on this list last time, although I could be incorrect. No surprise, Barcelona at the top. Manchester United at number two. And Fulham is in third. Yet another thing we get to overcome. Right, so the team is all rested up and ready to head out on the road to take on Wolves at Molyneux. Wolves currently in sixth. We enter this match in ninth, just three points out of the European places. And uh, Tom Burford's going to be serving his suspension, so Federico Guerrero is going to slot in at the number 10 in his place. It's going to be Shivlina in goal with back four of Harvey Vale, Marvin Akahoman, Reese Williams, and Daniil Denisov. Marco Morales is going to be our deep-lying playmaker as Craig Ross and Antonio Blanco coming back off of injuries. They are available on the bench as a substitute, but we felt it best not to start them in this match. It's a bit of an unfamiliar position for Morales, so hopefully he can slot in there without too much trouble. He will be paired with Dari Akande. Endo is going to be on the left wing, the Premier League young player for the month of October. Costa is going to be on the right, and Gabriel Amaya, with his six goals, will be leading the line as striker in today's match. Hopefully we can rebound from that 4-1 drubbing we suffered at home in the Cup to Arsenal. Seems like with our last campaign in the Premier League ending so poorly, we finished in 19th place. You already watched that, and if you hadn't, go back and watch earlier on in the series but it seems like every team 
we're able to talk about how we are looking to get revenge on them. Amaya for Guerrero, who will put it home as he pounds it into the ground for his sixth goal of the year. Beautiful feed by Endo, that early cross going back post. Amayo nodding it down to Guerrero. The goal has been awarded by VAR. Look at this pass. I mean, Endo, just 18 years old, playing for his country. Amaya finds Guerrero in space. Lunin could not course correct in time and Fulham with a very early 1-0 lead. In fact, I think 16 seconds in, that could be a new Fulham record for fastest goal. Thrown forward by Morales. Endo's not going to be able to catch up to it. Lunin is going to pounce. Hang on and look to uh, deliver it out to Mwanga. So rolling it out short, Gwendozi. Able to make a pretty good move on Amaya there. Fed forward, Namaso. Costa, though, can he catch up to that pass? No. Pa, Pedro Neto is going to fire it, though, wide. I think maybe uh, Havlina got a piece of it. He did. Shavlina. I got to remember how I'm pronouncing these names that I've never heard in my life. Sola, blocked off by Vale, gathered by Mwanga. Corner kick now. Neto to deliver. Mwanga can't get his head on it. Costa will clear it, but Neto tracking it down. Neto all over the place, still playing for Wolves after all these years. Trying to chip it in on goal, and Shavlina once again will direct that out over the byline, which will lead to another corner kick opportunity for Wolves. I mean, we've only played a little over three and a half minutes, and they're getting a ton of opportunities to try to equalize here, but Sola cannot control it. It will go out for a Fulham throw in. Another corner, this time from the near side. Neto can't connect with Doyle. Doyle will be able to play it back out. Neto in the middle. Wait, he didn't even come near him. Guerrero stepped in, knocked the ball away. Solo goes down. There was absolutely no contact. Is this another one of those football manager, like phantom tackle thing? It is. Second consecutive match where we concede a penalty that should never have been a penalty. So Shavlina be the hero. Fabio Silva steps up. And he roofs it. He goes top bins, as they like to say. His sixth goal of the year. And Wolves able to equalize at one from the penalty spot. And no, we do not need to see that highlight again. Although it played faster than I could click the button to continue. Can we maybe not have another Wolves? Hot? Okay. Sola taking the throw in ahead. Fabio Silva. It's not like they've been all over us. It's just they've kind of been all over us. Uh, Xiao Gomez out wide to the left. Pedro Neto again carrying it deep, centering it. Namaso with it, knocked away by Reese Williams. Neto gets it. He finds Silva in the middle. And just like Guerrero's goal, almost from the exact same spot on the other side of the pitch. Uh, that's his second goal of the afternoon. He's got seven on the season. And Wolves Bounce back, march back to a 2-1 lead. And we need to uh, start showing something a little different. Only the two shots on goal. We scored 16 seconds in, and somehow it's been all Wolves pretty much ever since. Another final third throw in for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Sola from the corner. Fabio Silva, this time he rockets it off the frame of the goal. Cleared away. João Gomez will get it, but that's going to end the threat. Still in ninth place, even with the result, although Tottenham, who is one point ahead of us, does have a game in hand on us. Morales with the free kick, sending it into the box over Akahoman's head. Amaya will track it down, plays it for Morales, taken out by Namaso. Vale will get it to Nisov. Amaya on the right side into the middle. Morales, his shot is blocked, and Wolves able to clear it. How did we not get a penalty on any of those? At least this time, our man was actually taken down by contact, football manager. I don't remember what the acronym is for the referees in the Premier League, but you guys need to get your act together. Two and a half, two to two and a half, two to one after the first half. Pair of goals from Fabio Silva, including one from the penalty spot. Another ninth minute goal we gave up. This time, though, it was from the spot kick. Federico Guerrero did put us up ahead. One nil after 16 seconds, but... So far, not so good on the road here for Fulham. We've been okay. Did manage to get three shots late on in that second half. Unfortunately, we could not get 
any of them past Lunin, and Lunin looked very shaky early on. We need to take more advantage of our opportunities. 15 minutes gone, though, in this second half, and we have yet to do that. Just a single shot on goal for Fulham, and we are going to need to make some alterations to our lineup because we are not getting the job done. Marco Morales is going to come off. Uh, Antonio Blanco, the captain, is motivated to come on in. Endo is having a very good game. Melvin Costa, though, not looking so great. So Zidkiga Chandler is going to take his place. Hopefully those two switches don't want to move anything around defensively just yet. We are also going to demand more from our team. Hopefully that will put us on the front foot as we move to a more attacking uh, position as well. Vale, though, is absolutely dying out there. Alex Guest will take his place. Federico Guerrero to be replaced by Craig Ross. And um, yeah, no, I can't I can't take Endo off. Ten minutes to go. We have made four substitutions and still not a single shot late in the second half. Hopefully we get one here off of the corner kick, but Wolves are going to be able to clear that away. Goes right to Daniil Denisov, fed forward for Reese Williams. Williams in the box, taking it deep, trying to square it up, hits the post, cleared away again. Denisov's just going to let that roll out for a Fulham throw, which we are not going to get to see. That's what I was worried about. He was going to let it go, and we weren't going to see a further highlight. We do have six minutes of time added on at the end. We're going to go very attacking, but uh, it's not going to make any difference. We are going to run out of road, folks. It's Wolves 2, Fulham 1, and uh, our woes are kind of continuing. Not the greatest episode. This is the first time in a very long time that we have lost multiple games in one episode. In fact, I think the last time was the final game of the regular season or the final episode of the regular season in our first season here at Craven Cottage. 2-1 is your score. We still sit in ninth place. We are now only eight points clear of relegation, but again, a whole slew of teams in between us, newly promoted Sunderland is one of them. Everton still in the drop zone in 19th place on five points. And Sheffield United just two points out of 10 and a minus 25 goal difference. At least our goal difference is in the positive. A plus four is a very good place for us to be as a newly promoted side. I mean, to be perfectly honest, sitting where we are right now, mid-table, actually top half if you want to look at it that way, four wins. Two draws, four losses. It's a little bit better than where I thought we might be coming back into the Premier League. Yes, we ran through the championship like it was a hot knife through butter. But we knew that this was going to be a much tougher test. And I think we have stood up to it pretty well. We're going to advance forward to the end of the year. We're heading to Anfield for a Boxing Day matchup against Liverpool, and then we are back home just before New Year's Eve, taking on Burnley at Craven Cottage, and I hope to see you then because it's all happening tomorrow. Please make sure you hit the like button on the video. Also, subscribe if you have not done so already, and thank you everyone for all of your support and your eyeballs. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.